Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial where we'll be showing you how to build this man lander with a rover that you can send to the man, gather science and return your curables safely. So without any further ado, let's get building. So if you want a tutorial just to how to get the man, skip to the time code on the screen, but here we go. Let's start off with a Mark III command pod, a heat shield and, well, parachute to return safely and a deep coupler. Now I'm hoping that you know that you engineer a rocket in reverse, in other words, the well, last thing you do to the first thing you do. Now we've got a standard lander can here, but uh, let's change it out a bit and put the rocket engines on the outside of the rocket. That means that'll give us enough room to put something underneath the rocket. For say for example, a rover. Now what you want to do is put the rockets as low as possible because we're going to put the landing legs on it and we want as much room as possible underneath. So put the landing legs as low as possible so that they attach. Rotate them if they're at an angle like they are here, so you get that little extra room. So what I do by here, I put an RCS can underneath, and that's just to give that little extra space to put the rover under, so that it doesn't clip any of the rocket engines. Add a decoupler so we can decouple the rover from the rocket, and an adapter just so we can attach it. Now, if you're using the Mark II lander can because you've got the this variant in 1.6, which is awesome as a rover, but say if you've got the console version or a lower version. Well, you can use the inline cockpit and then add a crew cabin to add more kerbals to it. Then all you have to do is use the rotate tool and the offset tool to position it correctly and make sure that, well, it's in a sensible position. All you want to do is make sure that it's not clipping the rocket part and it's as center as possible and it's not going to explode when you detach it from the rocket. Okay, now that's done, let's add some wheels. Make sure that symmetry is set to mirror mode so the wheels are correctly placed on either side. Attach it as such and make sure that they rotate so they're straight and possibly as low as possible. Make sure they're not lower than the landing legs and yeah, just copy it and do it on the reverse side. As such. Now there's your over, all you have to do for that is really add some solar panels and some batteries. Oh, and do not forget the science tools. Otherwise, well, how are you gonna collect science otherwise? Well, additionally though, I found out with this, on the front and the back, you can have the Kerbals enter and exit via those hatches. And on Kerbin, you, they can't just about reach those hatches. So attach some ladders. It's a bit difficult for the Kerbals to grab onto ladders, but they're able to, and they can get back in. But in any case, for those of you with the 1.6 update, you can use the Mark II lander can, change to this squarish variant, and then attach the wheels. Don't forget to switch the symmetry mode to mirrored. And as you're attaching the wheels to a flat surface, change the angle snap to off and attach the wheels as low as possible until they just about attach. Do it for both sides and all the wheels should be level. Now, the only other thing you do here as in I increase the traction control. Hopefully that'll give you extra control on the man because well, the man has low gravity, so you will slide around. Then again, don't forget the solar panels and the batteries. Now I'll make a slight mistake by here attaching the batteries. Where I place the batteries by here, if I attach the solar panel straight and I attach the batteries, I thought that's a cool design. Those batteries hit the rocket engines and makes it difficult to move the rover from under the lander. Now don't forget to attach the science and lastly don't forget the ladder on the lander can. Now if you take this to the MAN or MINMAS it's not so bad because you can use the Kerbal's jetpack to get the Kerbal's back into the rocket. So you don't really need the ladder if you can fly your Kerbal's around easily enough but if you can't and you keep on killing your Kerbal's doing that then the ladder is an essential tool. Now we have one last thing for the lander, and that is power. Now I forgot to add it at the beginning, which you should never forget to add power. Don't forget to add batteries as well, because once you're outside the sun and you're using a lot of power, it's easy to lose control. Right now for the rocket to take it to the man. So you may be wondering how we're gonna attach a rocket to the bottom of this. Well, it's easy enough. All you have to do is attach a decoupler Make sure the decoupler isn't too big. So a smaller decoupler may be what you want to use. Next, you'll want to put a fairing on it to launch it. 
Now, what I'm going to do by here is press small rocket tank. Like that, that'll give us space underneath the wheels to put the fairing. So then pick the fairing. Uh, choose which correct size. You don't normally need huge ones for all builds. So just make sure you cover the entire lander. And this is just to make it aerodynamic through the atmosphere. Otherwise, you will create a little extra drag and you may end up flipping your rocket out. Okay, so let's build the rocket. Right, first off, I'm going to add the X200 Rocket Max tank and in the Poodle engine. This will be able to get us to the man from Corinne and perhaps deorbit us a little bit. So let's add another decoupler. And now for the launch stage. Now, the launch stage is going to be in three stages, I believe. And what we're going to do is a center core with the X400 fuel tanks, two of them to be exact. And we'll use the mainsail engine because it has awesome thrust. And what we want to do is copy this. So on the PC, use Alt and mouse click. And on the Xbox, I believe is X and Y. And the PS4, I think, is square button and X. So now that we've copied that, add a uh, radial decoupler, then attach the rocket that you've just copied onto there. Now what we want to do is first off add a fuel line from that rocket tank to the inner rocket tank. So then the fuel will flow from the outer rocket tank into the inner one and then you'll basically get extra delta V from that. I'm not going to go into much, too much detail, just trust me on this. Oh yes, and don't forget to add struts because these rockets tend to wobble if you don't do so. I normally just add four for aesthetics reasons and well just because it's habit. Now that's done, we need to add another stage. Make sure the staging is correct, by the way, so you can read the delta V. Just, we've got probably got enough to get into orbit, but I'm going to add another tank. So again, copy that from the rocket from the decoupler. Now you want to alter the staging so that all the rockets fire at the same time, but you want the decou radial decouplers to detach at different times. So first off, detach the fuel line and reattach it to the rocket you just added and attach that the other side of the fuel line to the second tank. So then that's going to decouple first. In other words, you're feeding the fuel from the outer tanks to the inner tanks and then to the center tank. That way you're feeding the fuel from the outer tanks to the inner tanks and then you can detach the empty tanks. Oh yes. And one thing I almost forgot was to add some struts for the lander because Inside the fairing, sometimes everything wobbles around. I don't think it's supposed to, but maybe it does. But anyway, it's always best to add as many struts as possible, just to be sure. Oh yes, and you have this. You see, we've separated that rocket and hit the main rocket. Luckily, the main rocket survived, but just in case it doesn't, what you need to do is add Sepatrons, and these are going to push the outer rockets away from your center rocket. Okay, so first off, let's angle the Sepatron to point inwards towards the rocket. So it pushes it away. You can offset it like I have done by here, so it's not pointing directly at the main rocket, because sometimes they do cause other parts to explode. Make sure that Sepatron is staged on the decoupler, the same time as the decoupler. And then all you have to do is copy that Sepatron, put it around the four points around the rocket. That should make sense, because then you're pushing away the center of mass of the outer tanks. And then what you want to do is then add it to the other tanks, okay? But make sure that you add the Sepatron to the correct stage, like so. And then do the same, just copy that Sepatron around and place them around the rocket. And that should ensure that your outer rockets do not slam into your inner rocket. Now all you have to do, which I normally do, is add some launch clamps to the outside of the rockets and just make sure they're staged at the same time as the rockets, the main rockets that fire. And then all you have to do is go through the stages, make sure everything is correct in the right place. Now, looking at the Delta V of this rocket, we've got more than enough to get to the man and back, maybe even back to Minmus and have a little jolly over there. I added that extra Delta V, so if you mess up, then you have plenty of Delta V to correct it. Now that you've built your rocket and you're ready to go to the man, let's go. Engage those engines, make sure SAS is engaged, and go straight up. So what I normally do by here is I wait until the surface speed is about 90 meters per second, and then we tilt over to the right about 10 degrees or so. You don't have to worry about flipping out at this speed, because normally you 
the reason why you flip out is because you can travel at high speeds and the aerodynamics is pushing your rocket sideways, which you don't want. Now that you've done this, what you want to do is make sure that you are pointing the rocket mainly in the center of that yellow circle while turning slowly over. What you want to try to do is get about 45 degree angle when you get about 10 kilometers. So don't rush it though. If you can't turn as fast and you worry about, worry about tipping over, don't worry. Just keep on turning slowly. Oh, and don't forget the stage when your rockets are empty. The earlier you stage your rockets once they're empty, the more delta V, D, delta v you have when you get into space. Now go into map view, make sure that you keep an eye on your... What you want to do is make sure that your apparatus gets to about 100 kilometers, then you can kill the thrust, and once you're in space you can plan your maneuver to get into orbit, which we'll show you momentarily. Now you may have noticed that I'm not staying that close to the center of the yellow circle, and that was because when you get through the thickest part of the atmosphere, it doesn't matter so much you won't flip out so much because the aerodynamic drag is reduced. Now we've added a maneuver note to get ourselves into a circular orbit. And as always, burn half of the maneuver note first and then after the maneuver note you're approaching. In other words, if the maneuver note is one minute long, if the burn is one minute long, burn half a minute before the maneuver note and half a minute after. I hope that makes sense. And anyway, let's finish this maneuver note make sure that we're in a 100 kilometer circular orbit and then make our way towards the man right first off let's target the man set as a target and what i normally do as i look where the man is going to be over the horizon when we approach it add a maneuver node on our orbit but there and then hey presto you should get an encounter now all you have to do is then fiddle with your maneuver node so here, all you have to do is fiddle with the position of the maneuver node, try to get the periapsis of your closest approach to the man as close as possible, then use the prograde to reduce that. Now, what I've done here, I've right-clicked on the periapsis so it stays up. I'm not sure what that control is on the console, but it's a handy feature. Make sure that you don't have to keep on mousing over the periapsis. Anyway, let's say you're approaching the man at a angle like this well what you can do is make a maneuver note like we have here and adjust it like so don't try to adjust it on your burn maneuver note when you're burning towards the man because sometimes it doesn't work so yeah if you have problems with your orbit do a correction burn when you're on the way to the man it makes it a lot easier just make sure that you don't do that maneuver note when you're really close to the man because then it takes a lot more delta v that is why I've added the extra Delta V to this rocket. And then all that's left to do is burn our way to the man. Now you can burn the maneuver nodes any way you want. Normally I like to stay in map view because then I can keep track of the node. Just in case you didn't burn the maneuver node correctly, then you can do some fine adjustments during the burn. And that saves that little extra Delta V. Now I've staged by here because even though we have extra fuel in that tank that was mainly for us to get into orbit and then the tank, the rocket that we're using now was meant to get us to the man. But as I said, I gave you the extra delta to make sure that anything that goes wrong you can do some awesome corrections and perhaps you can go to Minmus if you're an awesome rocketeer. Anyway, let's get ourselves into orbit around the man. Now it's simple enough, all you have to do is create a maneuver node at your periapsis on your closest approach to the man, and then burn retrograde. Let's fast forward to the maneuver node. But by you, you may notice that we time warped directly to the maneuver node time and we didn't burn half the time before and half the time after. Do not worry too, han too much about that because what you can do is what I'm doing by here, burn as much as the maneuver node you can. And look at this, we're almost in a circular orbit. So it doesn't matter, we're going to be landing on the man. Well, a quick fast forward to our maneuver node for landing. And you can see by here, I've angled our trajectory so it passes over some smooth areas and hopefully not over some craters. Well, that's to make sure that we don't land near too many craters. And because when you land near a crater, you have the slopes on the edges of the crater or inside the crater. So you want, really want to try to launch, or land, sorry, on one of the smoothest areas possible. 
And that's not 100% possible sometimes. And now that we have burnt, we've jettisoned the transfer stage, extending the landing legs, we are go for landing. I repeat, we are go for landing. So, landing on the man. Now, here is what you need to do. At about 40 kilometers up, kill your velocity about to about 200 meters per second, time warp till you're about 25 kilometers up, then kill your velocity to about, I don't know, about 150 meters per second. So all we're doing by here is reducing our speed so that we land not too near this crater that we're heading towards, and it makes sure that we don't have to burn too much when we come close to the surface. So we're just killed to about 100 meters per second, about 10 kilometers, and at about 5 kilometers or so, reduce your speed to as low as possible. I've almost zeroed us out. So then, when you start falling, you fall directly down. And that's important because if you're falling sideways, there's a good chance that you may tip over when you're landing. And at around about this point, two to three kilometers, have a look for your shadow of your spacecraft. Hopefully, you're not landing at night time. But if you plan on doing that, make sure you add some light to you the bottom of your rocket that also helps and what you want to do is just feather your throttle to reduce your speed to about three meters per second or under and then you'll come down landing gently and hey you've landed on the man with a rover now all you have to do is get your curls out into the rover and do some science now i had some problem trying to get this rover out after transferring the Kerbals over to the rover and getting Bob out on EVA for his science, well, this is when I found a problem with my rover design. If you pay close attention to the batteries on the top of the rover, you'll see that when I move forward after I disable the torque on the capsule, the batteries are hitting the rocket engine, stopping it from coming from under the rocket. So what I did by here, I found out a neat trick. Now, if you've got tweak walls enabled, you can do spring dampener override and then reduce the strength of the springs. So then, so the rover dips down a bit, releasing it from underneath the rocket. Now we can do some science. You may have to enable tweak walls for that. But now that the rover is free, let's go do some science. You may be wondering why a rover? Well, you can move a rover around and go to different biomes for science. Just make sure you keep an eye on the charge of the rover. I found out that this design rover can't go over steep hills and may not be able to go into craters, so you may want to change the design and perhaps use different wheels. But that's entirely your choice. And then once the science is done, we have to do our celebratory flag planting and some scenes where the Kerbals are walking around and making themselves look busy. But once all the Kerbal man walking has been done, well, we have to return. So how do we do that? Well, get your Kerbals back on board, retract your ladder, and then it's just as easy as just engaging your other engines. Now, take note where the north is on the man, and you want then to go at 90 degrees at launch, and then angle. Hey. Take note of the heading and try to head at 90 degrees as much as possible. That makes sure that you're roughly on the right heading. I don't think it matters so much on the man, but it does help a lot when you're planning your return. Now, if you're not using my unique rover lander design, then make sure that you at least get over 10 kilometers over the surface of the man before you attempt to get into orbit, because some of the craters and hills and all that uh, peak up about 5 kilometers, so at least at 10 kilometers, you should miss them completely. Anyway, now that we're in orbit, let's explain how to return. Well, if you make a maneuver node behind them and the direction is traveling, you can see it's given us a gravity boost and we're leaving Kerbin altogether. So if you create a maneuver node about 45 degrees from the front of the man, it gives us a gravity drag. <laughs> in other words, it's a gravity assist where the man is helping us reduce our speed in relation to Kerbin, so we go low. Now, I'm going to hit the atmosphere about 32 kilometers. With this type of design and a heat shield, you should be able to get about 32 kilometers or about 30 kilometers, I normally aim at. 
and that should return you safely to the surface of Kerbin. Also, don't forget to collect all the signs from the rover because we're not returning, returning that with us. Although I suppose if you're clever enough, you could add a docking port to the bottom of the rocket and return the rover as well. This is Kerbal Space Program, anything's possible. Now we're on a last but dangerous leg of our journey. Will the capsule explode at this altitude? Well, make sure you point at retrograde first, so then the heat shield is head hitting the atmosphere. But with this design at about 30 kilometers, you should definitely be able to make it to the surface safely. So check in the map by here, and say you return to Caribbean at a lower altitude, well, what might happen is that you might stay in orbit. You'll do what is called an aero braking and get into lower orbit, but you may have to do a couple of passes around Kerbin before you finally return to the surface. But with all my experience of going to the man and back, I always find that about 30 kilometers on your return trip into the atmosphere, make sure that you do return safely. So if you enjoyed this tutorial so far, hit that like button, perhaps leave a comment or tell me your story or any problems you may be having with KSP. I may be able to help. I may even do a tutorial on it. But now back to the tutorial. Last thing you need to do is you see the parachute symbol on the left. It's red. You have to make sure it's green before you engage the parachute. Although I do think that uh, the safe deployment is enabled by default so open the parachute and all I can say from here as I curl safely descend to the ocean is in thrust we trust but in aerodynamics we survive celestial mechanics in other words use a parachute when you're landing on curbing anyway I'm Orbeta trust me I'm an engineer <laughs>